party has a nice long history going back to the Clinton years when people in the basement got together and had uh, a, uh, a nice luncheon. This is awesome. This is the sweet, that's the savory, and that's the alcohol. <laughs> Doug, Doug is already preset, so he's all ready to go. <laughs> I know. I'm ready. If we can have your attention, please. Martha. There you go. That's what I. Welcome, everybody, to the uh, basement party, which we have traditionally given since the 1990s and expanded it. Um, to upstairs and then uh, the press office has always been a part of it as well but it represents a time when everybody comes together and what uh, unites them which is providing the news in an accurate and timely way <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and uh, one of the things that uh, this year is uh, is uh, that, that uh, we'd like to do is to do a, a toast for someone who was particularly good at his work and for his many years here, and that's the late Bill Plant. And so, Say that again, raise, raise a, Bill Plant. a glass Bill Plant. to Bill Plant, yeah, sure. who represented the, uh, the very best in reporting over a long period of time. And Tam? Yes. Take it away. And well, let's let's drink to Bill Plant first. One of, one of my mentors and one of the greatest guys to ever be down here. Great human being. Um, and thank you all for coming to the basement. Uh, thank you to the White House press staff for joining us down here, uh, for moving around the room all the way down to the basement. Um, <laughs> um, I, I have talked about this before, but the uh, collegial and yet adversary, advers adversarial relationship that we have um, is working quite well. And, um, and we are grateful for all that you do to make it possible for a free press to be there when the president makes big announcements, when the president makes small announcements, when the president is playing golf. We are there. <laughs> um, so um, let us salute the first year back of very many of this basement party. And cheers. Now, more importantly, happy holidays. We have a grand tradition. Uh, read it, baby. And Greg, I want to turn it over to you. When he's done, you all can read all the poems from past years and know that he wrote <laughs> Quite beautifully. Happy holidays. Well, Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays. Let's first of all thank Martha for all of her effort for... Uh, yeah. Yeah. It, it, uh, it took a village and uh, George Condon is the Decorations Committee and, and did a great deal and all the people who, who brought things. We have CNN's Popeyes, Fox's uh, Cupcakes and uh, then anyway, all rolls. the individuals, yes, <laughs> and the egg rolls. Well, this, this is a poem that dates back to 19, a tradition that dates back to 1998. This is the 24th edition of the White House Press Basement version, 2022, an attempt to capture some of the political highlights of the year. "'Twas the night before Christmas and in the White House, not a creature was stirring, not even a mouse. Stockings were hung by the chimney with fear, worried that inflation would not disappear. POTUS was sleeping, all snug in his bed, while visions of ice cream danced in his head. <laughs> he dreamed of the year, and Justice Stephen Breyer announcing his plan to finally retire. <laughs> Biden's campaign promise won Senate support. A black woman now sits on the land's highest court. When SCOTUS overturned Roe versus Wade, Biden blasted the court. He was clearly dismayed. The ruling, he said, was a point of inflection, putting abortion on the ballot in the midterm election. A Peter Ducey question prompted POTUS to swear. <laughs> what a stupid SOB was heard on the air. <laughs> Putin's Russian troops invaded sovereign Ukraine. The brutal war continues, causing misery and pain. With high oil prices causing pain at the pump, Biden met MBS with a friendly fist bump. But production was cut by OPEC plus nations, prompting a review of Saudi relations. 
Saki left the White House for cable TV. KJP cites the Hatch Act almost daily. <laughs> First Lady Jill made some comments that stung when breakfast tacos rolled off of her tongue. While economists predicted a likely recession, Biden issued pardons for marijuana possession. He offered a plan to forgive student debt, hoping grateful young voters wouldn't forget. He warned of semi-fascists in the GOP, vowing to protect our democracy. Democrats prevailed on a big climate bill and <laughs> kept Senate control on Capitol Hill. All of a sudden, there arose such a clatter, POTUS jumped up to see what was the matter. When who should appear, in a pantsuit of course, but Speaker Pelosi, a powerful force. <laughs> she was dressed all in white, from her head to her toe, explaining it was time for her generation to go. But the 80-year-old Biden wasn't sure he was done, eyeing re-election he intended to run. A final decision would follow family talks about facing the man who kept classified docs. And I heard Biden exclaim, heading off on a hike, Merry Christmas to all, I won't fall off my bike. <laughs> Merry Christmas.